When I say bananas, you say peppers. I wish I could like flap this fan fast enough that I could do the cool like blah, you know, when you're like five and you stick your face up to a fan and you go blah. I like really never grown out of that phase, but I am fanning myself because I actually just filmed a video for my main channel in this pirate hat and um, it is hotter than Hades here today. I, I don't, I don't know what to make of it. You guys, last week in Texas, we were buried under three inches of ice and we didn't have any water and we didn't have any electricity and now today it feels like we are entering the cusp of hell. It is very warm and I'm not just gonna blame sitting under these super bright lights and wearing a thick leather hat on my skull. I'm gonna blame something else. Anyway, today's video you guys is an unfinished, <laughs> I almost said an unfinished masterpiece. I'm trying to make you guys laugh today. Today's video, you guys, I started filming last September and I filmed it in like very awkward sunlight as you guys are about to see. I don't know, it's kind of weird. Like at the time I thought that the sunlight was like too extreme and creating really bad shadows like on the paper. As you guys probably know from the title or the thumbnail of this video or what you're about to see in like five seconds, it is a stationary unboxing video. I had placed a large order from Jet Pens, which is an amazing place to get all kinds of unique stationary, hashtag not sponsored. But my intention with this video was to start filming it and then like wait for the sun to not exist in the sky anymore and then I was gonna like finish the video and then like have a whole video but I just never finished filming it and then I realized that like this video was already approximately 30 minutes long and I still had the same amount of stationary items left to show you guys so this is just it's a mess it's a mess but I felt like too weird to just pick up a video from September. So it's a two-parter now. So today is a stationary haul that I started in September and I never finished. Um, and now, you know, hopefully in the next week or so, I will film the second half of this video. And that will also probably be like 20 or 30 minutes in length because I just went stationary crazy with this haul. And there are a lot of fun things to look at. But yeah, I felt like instead of just like refilming everything that I had already tested out, that I would just go ahead and just do this, whatever this is, and um, and then I would just film another video. Hi. Did I just say the same thing like about four times? Anyway, you guys, I hope y'all are all having a wonderful day so far. And uh, I will be back again probably tomorrow, maybe the next day with another exciting video. Oh my gosh, you guys, I feel like I'm like having a weird mood today. Like, are you ever like in a really good mood, but at the same time, like everything that comes out of your mouth is just awkward? Because that's me today. And I'm just like, am I having a hot flash? How do I know what that is? I'm hot, but this has been a prolonged experience, so I don't think it's a flash. How long does a hot flash last? Am I old? I've never been like hot in my life, I'm always cold. This is a hot flash. Oh my God, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I just need more caffeine. That's probably the problem. Also, there is no outro for this. So it's just gonna abruptly stop. Anyway, I love you guys. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for watching. And until I see you guys again, stay happy, stay healthy, stay sassy. Stay banana peppery um, and subscribe maybe if you're not already subscribed and that is something you'd like to do. Also, I just, I just showed this in the last video, but look at this discovery I made, okay? Look at this. This is a purple. This was in my last like Amazon stress related products and I just decided, it's like a stress relieving Furby. It's like a Furby that you calm it down and then as you're soothing this adorable creature, you start, you're, you're supposed to feel more calm, but I just, sta I didn't staple, I clipped, I very gently clipped this bang piece of hair to the purple. <laughs> and I love it. I'm, I'm really living for this. Look at it. I feel like, you know what I'm saying? This is like, maybe it's Maybelline. That's enough madness for me from one, from one day. That's enough madness from me for one day. Anyway, I love you guys and I'll be back again. Bye.
When I say bananas, you say peppers. And today is gonna be another big stationary unboxing slash I almost said try on haul. But we're gonna be swatching all of these awesome new pins and art supplies that I got from Jet Pins. The last haul that I did with them, you guys really seemed to enjoy it. There was a bunch of really, interesting and I think uncommon pins, markers, sharpies, highlighters, the whole kit and caboodle. It was really fun to go through and unbox with you guys. So that is what we're going to be doing again today. Also, I hope the lighting is not too bad. I usually live a completely nocturnal existence, but today I wanted to get up and enjoy the sunshine and film during the day and now I'm battling the sun. It's about to get really exciting because I have to be honest, I ordered these items about two to three weeks ago and I was doing some late at night shopping. I don't even remember all the things that I left in my wish list and all of the things that I bought. So we're, we're just gonna be testing it out today. I don't, I don't even know. I don't remember what these things are meant to be. But up first we have something by the brand Kuratake and it's called a Wink of Stella brush. I don't remember if this is meant to be like a topper kind of pin. Like in other words, you would do like calligraphy or lettering in a pretty colored pin and then you would trace over it with this item just to give it a shimmery top coat or if it's actually gonna have some sort of pigment to it on its own. Let's see what it says. Oh, this is gonna be one that we have have to prime a little bit, kind of like a paint pin. It's squishy. Ooh, it's like a super soft brush tip. We have to do some pin construction here. Oh my gosh. Okay, remove black ring. Oh, okay. So I bet we are about to punch down this little cap here. And now that I moved the camera over here, it's like the shadows are following me. Oh, you guys, this is not a pin for silly gooses or beginners. Look at this. Look at that. I just dribbled a bunch of ink. The little tip here still looked white a couple of seconds ago and then just ink started spurting everywhere. So this is probably a pin for people that know what they're doing. Ooh, which is not me. Oh, but this looks... So pretty. This is definitely for somebody that knows what they're doing because I feel like it's not, it's not like skipping really, but ooh, it's almost like painting. That's the word I'm looking for. It has like a paintbrush tip. Oh my gosh. But this is so fun and beautiful. And I wish I knew what I was doing. This is like also like really calming. Okay, so there is my beautiful artwork that I just did. I spent about like three minutes, embarrassingly enough. It took me that long just to write my name. I'm also sure you can see how shaky my brush strokes are because I really have no experience. I cannot remember the last time that I picked up a paintbrush in any other way other than like to paint a wall or something. Oh, this is so beautiful. I really would love to purchase this in other shades. Like, oh my gosh. Okay, so this is called GL Dark Pink. I don't know what the GL stands for. And I'm curious to see how long this is gonna take to dry, but this is so amazing. And it's really fun to just kind of, you know, explore your more artsy side, especially if you're somebody like me and you mostly just like write down a bunch of notes and scribbles. On to something that I'm sure you guys are much more familiar with. And I don't know if I picked this one up just because it looked like a different colorway that I had never seen before or if I thought it was gonna be a different type of Sharpie pen. And I'm gonna show it to you guys up here too. Once again, I feel like I went with a ton of pinks and purples and fuchsias. You guys know I'm just crazy about the pinks, the purples and the fuchsias. I think this is gonna be like a brush pen. So it is a Sharpie pen, but it says a Sharpie pen brush. Ooh, and this is in the shade Power Pink. Oh my gosh, okay, so it is, ooh. Yeah, see this also is a gorgeous color, 
but it definitely, once again, feels like something that might be better with a little bit more of an experienced hand because, once again, it kind of feels like something that I could break nearly instantaneously or at least like damage the brush tip. Now, I do think that this is one of the less expensive. I mean, that is the great thing about jet pens is for the most part, you can order single pens like this for between like one to three dollars usually. So if you're kind of like me and you're just like dipping into the world of pens and stationary supplies and all kinds of stuff like this. You can get a variety of different pens. You can try a bunch so you can really see what's out there and what you really like, but you don't have to commit to paying too much all at once. You can just get one pin at a time. Okay, up next is a pin that I am very familiar with and I'm sure I've talked to you guys about it a bunch of times. This is the good old Pintel RSVP and I bought this one because it's black and orange. So we have a nice black sort of rubber grip tip here and let's go ahead and see. Ooh, we have like nice smooth black ink and this is just a traditional rollerball pin so I honestly it's been a long time since I've had a Pintel RSVP pin so I didn't really 100% remember what the writing style was like and if you guys have watched some of my other like stationary videos you know I'm not that crazy about rollerball pens. I normally go for the gel, but this does have a really nice smooth writing experience and it also doesn't seem to be dumping a lot of ink in any one particular place. You guys know what I'm talking about? Like a lot of times with roller pens, it's like you'll be writing and all of a sudden there will be like this blob of ink and you're like, why? Why has this occurred? Okay, up next, I think, yes, I have two of these. These are from the brand Uni and I do believe the full company name is Uniball and these are called Propus and I think that they are in fact two different things. I thought that these were the same but it seems like one is an erasable I, I don't know if it's going to be an erasable pen or an erasable marker and then the other one I think is going to be quite similar to the zebra mild liners where one side is more of a highlighter and then you get a complementary pen marker side on the other side. By the way, everybody always says that I say pen funny. I literally cannot imagine another way to pronounce pen. I don't know if I've ever addressed that before, but how I, I can't, I cannot imagine peen. I don't know how else you would say pen. Um, I say pen the same way, regardless of like, if it's a safety pen, a writing pen, a pig pen, it's all just a pen to me. So this is kind of the unique side of the pen, which is the highlighter. And this is why it's called window. I don't know if I told you guys before it's called window. And that's because I think you could actually like if you were highlighting in a textbook or something, you could see the words through the little tip here and then you'd know right where you're highlighting which is pretty interesting. I didn't really know what to expect with that. I didn't know if it was going to give us like a wider highlighted area or not but it looks about the same thickness as any other standard highlighter. This is a very very pretty lavender color and then let's flip it around on the other side. You guys can see it is almost like a felt tip you know. Uh, kind of fine pin and there we go love that writing experience I feel like when I first got the mild liners I wasn't really that attracted to them but now that I've had them in my arsenal uh, for a little bit longer I find myself grabbing them more and more okay let's check out this other erasable which this is like individually Plasti wrapped. Ooh, surprising. So this is a marker, I think. Um, once again, it looks like it's going to have to be something that we prime. And this actually looks more like it's going to be a highlighter, which is really, really interesting. I can't say that I've ever had a highlighter like this before where you have to prime it like a paint pen, but I guess that's why it's unique. Okay, hello, wake up wake up wake up finally okay it looks like we are ready to rock and roll now oh that is like 
a very faint, yet pretty, uh, pink highlighter. Now, I will just say, I'm sure you guys can see, this looks like a just regular old pink highlighter. So let me try and open up the eraser here. So it is like the uh, Pilot Friction. This is more or less like a kind of clear white plastic bit. It is referred to as an eraser, but it's more or less just creating, you know, friction to actually erase. Ew. Oh, that is, that's, that's different, you guys. I feel like with the Pilot Friction, there's not any like eraser dust that exists from those pins or markers, you know, whatever the friction line. But this, you guys, actually, like the ink doesn't just disappear. It actually gets wiped away. That is so interesting. It also looks a little bit cleaner, I guess, let's say, than the Pilot Friction, because I feel like when you use those and you erase them, like if you tilt the paper a certain way and it you know, catches the light, let's say, you can kind of see almost like a ghost image of the words and the ink and stuff that was written there before. But this is like, once you get that eraser dust, oh my god, that's so crazy. Okay, why am I shocked by that? Also, if you just rub it with your finger, it also rubs away. But I feel like there's not as much of a ghostly image there once you get the highlighter or the ink removed interesting so you guys are gonna have to let me know how you feel about that would you rather just uh, have them kind of disappear with friction and not have any of that kind of messy eraser dust stuff do you not care i don't know let me know okay up next we have something called a zebra fountain pen that i do believe yeah this has like a proper calligraphy pin nib. I feel like I got a couple of pins like that this time. I suddenly fancy myself a calligrapher. Like I'm gonna teach myself calligraphy like that or something. I don't, we'll, we'll see how that endeavor goes. Uh, so let's see. Ooh, oh my gosh. This is very interesting. So it feels kind of like a, an ink pin not necessarily gel, so almost kind of like a hybrid between a, oh, <gasps> yeah, you kind of have to like write at it at a certain angle. Anyway, I just cut myself off, but it's kind of in between a gel and like a regular rollerball pen. It's very, very fine. I'm trying to see, I'm like scared to push down too much because I know you can bust these nibs off of calligraphy pens quite easily but I think that there is a way that you can apply different what am I writing banana I started to write bunny but I wrote ba don't know what that is uh I think you can apply different pressure on these and more ink will come out or something so that you can create like different thicknesses of ink for calligraphy letters. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I also do feel like this was a relatively inexpensive uh, fountain pen like that, which once again, I feel like is really good if you're a beginner, you're somebody like me, you don't even really know if you'll want to get into calligraphy, but you think you'd like to try it. Okay, I have to open up this binder. Do you guys remember this one? I feel like this was from my first jet pens haul. <gasps> Isn't that so cool? I think that this is called the Kuratake or Kurafit binder. I don't know. I really like it. But uh, I have to take this bit of paper out because our first little ink spillage does not. There we go. I was like, it didn't want to let it go. Um, so then you just clamp it back together like so. Oh, amazing. <laughs> I had to remove this piece of paper because I'm actually surprised where I actually did the lettering down here. That ink is dry, but of course where I spilled some drops of ink there, that is still wet. So um, I just found another one of those Pentel RSVP pens in here. This time it's a purple and black pen, but I bet the ink is, yeah, still gonna be black. I think all the Pentel RSVP pens 
have black ink. So there is those two side by side. We have some Halloween color palettes going on. I also got another one of the Propus pins, which I guess I must have gotten the erasable marker and this window highlighter to kind of be complementary to each other. So this one is going to be like the purple one we tested over here with the window, except for this one is hot pink. And it also has that wonderful marker side, which this is really cool because it's actually like the exact shade of a hot pink highlighter, but it's in pin form instead of a highlighter. Okay, moving on. On, I have this, which I think I actually intended for this pin to be a part of. You remember when I told you guys that I wanted to do an entire stationery haul based on stationery and pens and pencils and stuff made out of recyclable materials? This is a completely recycled pen, I believe. It is called Pilot, and I think it's called B2 or something, but it's actually entirely made out of, uh, plastic like water drinking bottles. So once again, I think that this is gonna be a ballpoint pen and it is, ah, oh, see, that kind of has the, the ink. See where it gets like a little bit thicker there? Yeah, this one is a little bit more like a traditional um, rollerball pen, which is not bad. I mean, it's still smoother than a lot of other rollerball pens that I have tested before, but I still think if given the choice, I am always going to go for a gel pen, but I definitely got this one just on pure fascination of what a pen made out of recycled water bottles would look and feel like, and it's so awesome. I love it. Okay, up Next, I have this, which if you guys watched my recent stationery haul, which was stationery items from Amazon, uh, one of the items I tested out in there was glitter highlighters. And I think that that brand was just Crayola. And I think that it was you guys that recommended this to me. It's a different pin. Uh, it's a different brand of glitter highlighters. And I at Kira Rich. Is that how we're gonna say that? I don't see the actual brand. Oh, it's Zebra. So Zebra Kira Rich. Let me zoom you guys in even closer. The tip of this pen does look really sparkly. Oh my gosh. <gasps> yeah, this is really, really sparkly highlighter. And the sun is so weird today. I don't know if you guys can see exactly how sparkly it is, but I do feel like these might be just a teeny tiny bit sparklier than the Crayola one. And once again, I think that they make tons of different colorways in this highlighter, but I just got one this time to see if I would like it or not but I do, and I would definitely get more. The next kind of pen that I just got one of, I think I just got one of these, although I thought I got two. Maybe we'll find another one in there, I don't know. Uh, these are called the Brush Sign Pen. And I think that these are kind of a famous brand of pen as well. It might be Pilot, but I don't 100% remember. And uh, a bunch of colors just recently came out in this pen. And I think that this is like a brand new pen for 2020. So this is what it looks like. And I recently discovered this type of pen and I really, really like it so far. And I think it's like a felt tip, but it's kind of like a felt tip that you can't crush as easily. It's almost like if there is a felt tip somehow embedded in a plastic tip. So let's go ahead. Oh my God. Okay. This one. Nope. You definitely, you definitely could probably damage this. Ooh, this is like a nice color, but the writing experience is kind of weird. Like, I feel like it's very easy. I don't know if we would call it skipping, but do you guys see, it's almost like, it's probably honestly just from my inexperience, but um, it's like you really have to be careful to apply just the right kind of consistent pressure 
because if not, um, if it lifts in just the littlest tiny bit, I guess, I guess I must be lifting it or just not applying the same uniform amount of pressure. It's almost like skipping, but not skipping because it's like a felt tip marker kind of thing, but it just doesn't give you like a consistent line, I guess you could say. So I don't know, this is probably the first one today that I have mixed feelings on. I really, really love the color. It's almost like a beautiful faded tie-dye blue, but it's definitely a little bit trickier. But maybe I can revisit this when I get a little bit more experienced with the brush tip pens, and maybe I'll be able to get a better technique or something. 